Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, I'd like to take a look at reaction mechanisms in the context of chemical kinetics in general chemistry. So the first question is, what is a reaction mechanism? A reaction mechanism essentially tells you the step-by-step -step procedure that has to take place in order for an overall reaction to happen. So over here, if I take a look at this, it says 2A plus B goes to C. Now when we look at an overall, we may read that and think, okay, so 2A molecules react with a B and they form C. But that's not actually how it's going to happen in this case. And the way that I know that is this reaction mechanism here with these elementary steps. So the elementary steps are going to tell you the actual number of atoms or molecules that need to come together in order for a reaction to happen. And you'll see the order in which they move. So we can see then, for this reaction to occur, the first thing that has to happen is actually for two A atoms or molecules to come together. And they're going to form something called D. So we're going to talk about what D is because D obviously doesn't appear here. The second step here has D react with B to form C. So these are the two steps that are required in order for the overall reaction to happen. So now there are a couple things you want to know about a reaction mechanism. The first is, when you add those elementary steps together, they must yield the overall reaction. So what I mean by that is this. If I take a look at this here, I have two A's. Now you can see here, D is a product and then D is a reactant. So that means it cancels out. In the context of these, I would call D an intermediate. So an intermediate is some kind of species that is formed in the process of the reaction and then used. So it's going to start as a product and it's going to end as a reactant and it will cancel out. It is not going to be present in the overall reaction. So that means there will be no D in this overall reaction as I'm adding these two together. Then I see I have one B and they will form a C. So you can see that this reaction and this reaction are equivalent with one another. So that means that my reaction mechanism passes the first step. The next thing is, is that the rate law of my reaction mechanism has to be equivalent to the experimentally determined rate law. So you do an experiment to figure out what a rate law is, and the mechanism that I put forth has to have a matching rate law. Now what's going to be important when you're talking about that is these words here, slow and fast. So we have something called a rate determining step. The rate determining step is the same as the slowest step in your mechanism. Your reaction can only go as fast as the slowest component. So this one here, we're going to abbreviate RDS for rate determining step. So that means that I'm going to use the first elementary step in order to figure out what the rate is according to my reaction mechanism. Keep in mind that my one that I've determined experimentally is the rate is equal to K times A squared. So now a few things. Remember that when you're talking about a rate law, you cannot use the coefficients in the overall balanced equation to figure out what the rate law is. Right here we'd have a b with a coefficient of 1, but there's no b there. When you're talking about elementary steps, you can use the coefficient. So what that means is, I know that this one here is my rate determining step. So what I'm going to say then is based on this mechanism, my rate is equal to K, the rate constant, times. So now my only reactant that I have is A, and there are two of them, so it would be squared. So we can see that this rate does in fact match the one that I figured out experimentally. So this reaction mechanism that I have then meets both criteria. So those are some of the things you're going to want to know when you're dealing with reaction mechanisms and chemical kinetics.